Now we have the uh, next uh, speaker here. Um, now the topic uh, for these uh, next two speakers are um, Nibbana or Nirvana or <coughs> salvation. Um, from Theravada tradition, we have uh, Reverend Veluria Nyana. Um, I request Reverend Veluria Nyana to present his paper. Respected Chairperson, uh, respected members of Sangha, distinguished guests, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, actually, yesterday also I was talking about uh, Anicca. Um, actually, my duty is uh, just to focus uh, only on Anicca. And the day before yesterday only, I came to realize that I will have to do on this uh, Nibbana topic also. This is uh, an, an opportunity given by the organizing committee since there, there was no one to uh, focus on that line from the Tiravara point. So yesterday, uh, regarding this, uh, yesterday this uh, Benarabha Thayn Bandiji, who is a sitting in Pran Row, he was teasing me that uh, whether I'm going to Nibbana after this session. So I, I just, I was smiling. I was smiling. Actually, it's a no wonder if I say that I have been to Nibbana many times. I have been to Nibbana many times. And also not only me, you, you people also have been to Nibbana many times. Many, many times. Why I'm saying that? And regarding this, uh, there are three ways, three ways to realize Nibbana. Number one is uh, by way of uh, pleading or temporary. Number two is uh, by way of uh, keeping aside. Number one we call by way of temporary or fleeting, that's a dranga. Fleeting realization is a dranga. And by way of uh, keeping aside is a wakambana. And number three, the last one is uh, we can realize nibbana by way of um, complete or full realization. Since we are doing charity, uh, sorry, charity and um, moral concentration and uh, moral uh, conception, moral precepts and also concentration med meditation, we are realizing nibbana again and again, again and again. See, actually, nibbana is not. Um, nibbana is not far away from us. It's inside our body. And the Roy Dasa Sota of Angotra Nikaya, what the Buddha said is very clear. Imasme ye wa biyama matikali wari sasanyan misa manaki, dokhen cha, dokha samuriyan cha, dokha niroran cha, dokha niroda gamini pati baden cha, penya pemi. That means, in this very fat and long body, I declare there is a safari. There is a cause of suffering. There is a cessation of suffering. There is the way to the cessation of suffering. That means Nibbana is inside our body, not outside somewhere else. So, now what I want to introduce is uh, that um, my topic is uh, Nibbana, uh, the ultimate goal of Buddhists. It is the nature of all living beings, either human beings or animals, that they want to lead a peaceful life, happy life. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to experience troubles and hardships in life, though they are in the midst of a vast ocean of suffering. As knowledge of a person, human beings especially tried their best since ancient days to escape from such huge sufferings. They tried in two ways to reach to the ultimate and sustainable happiness, which is now known as Nibbana. First one, first way 
they fulfilled all the needs and the desires of oneself. The ultimate happiness by the, the, thinking that they, they would get the ultimate happiness by doing so. That way is called the Kama Sukha Liga New Yorker, self-indulgence. Another way is uh, nothing but torturing oneself by thinking that they would definitely get the sustainable uh, happiness by doing so, if they cannot get it by means of self-indulgence. This second way is called Atta Kilometer New Yoga, self-mortification. But both ways are in vain because they are is three ways. Now I'm going to focus on Buddha's teachings on Nibbana. The Buddha appeared in India on a magnificent land during the uh, sixth century BC. Before becoming as a Buddha, he himself had practiced two esoteric ways for six long years, thinking that it would help him for the liberation of his sufferings and attaining Nibbana. Later on, he avoided both esoteric ways and turned to the right path, which is Arya Atengika Mega. By following this Nova Eightfold Path, finally he got what he wanted. As far as the concept of a neighbor, not the ultimate goal of a Buddhist is concerned, what the Buddha taught is very clear and very interesting. The Buddha clearly stated in the Mula Panasa Pali that Nibbana is something which is uh, Nibbana is something which can be experienced in this very life. It's not something which can be experienced after death. Tewa Dami Sayan Abhinya Sachikatwa Upasan Baja Viharati. Here the word Daitewa Daitewa Dami means in this very life. Sayan means oneself. Abhinya means realizing. So therefore, Nibbana can be experienced in this very life, not after death, according to Buddhism. We, some Buddhists, are having a wrong concept that Nibbana can be experienced after death only. In Burma also, that concept is deeply rooted. It's an extremely wrong view. After death, no one can do anything. Actually, in the commentary on Theragata, it is said that Nibbana is of two kinds. That's Kilesa Nibbana, Saubadisa Nibbana Dhatu, that's a cessation of a defilement. And the second one, Kanda Nibbana, Anubadi says Nibbana Dhatu. That's a cessation of five aggregates, cessation of the entire body, cessation of five aggregates. Here, it's very clear that. Total cessation of entire defilement can be done in this very life, low. That's called Kilisa Prinibbana. Once we can experience this Kilisa Prinibbana, we can also experience Kanda Prinibbana when we die. Then there will be no more rebirth. Since there is no rebirth, there will be no death again and again. The nature of happy no birth and death is called Nibbana. In the Nibbana, Nibbuddha Sutta of Angotra Nikaya, a Brahmin named Janusoni asked the Buddha about the Pratika Nibbana that can be experienced in this very life. <coughs> the Buddha's answer was very practical. He said that no one, uh, one who is overwhelmed by greed, hatred, and delusion, loba, dosa, and moha, will cause trouble to oneself and others. He also will cause sufferings and limitations. But once he discarded greed, hatred, and delusion, he will no more cause trouble, sufferings, and limitations to oneself or others. Not having the nature of greed, hatred, and delusion is actually called Pratika Nibbana that can be experienced in this very life. There is also another way, uh, uh, there is also another wrong concept happening in the minds of Buddhists that 
They think nirvana is a place which is full of enjoyable things like heaven or paradise. Actually, nirvana is not a place but a natural element that can be attained through insight wisdom by killing all the defilements. In the commentary on Padisamida Mega, the nature of heaven, no thirsty craving, is called Nibbana. Vana Sankadaya, Tanaya, Nikantata, Nibbana. If one can eliminate that, cra that craving with insight wisdom, one can attain Nibbana. In the Nibbana Penya Sutta of Salayarana Sanyukta Pali, an ascetic named Jambu Kadaka asked the Buddha regarding what Nibbana is. The Buddha gave a very simple but best answer. Simply best answer was given by the Buddha saying that Nibbana is a situation where there is no greed, hatred, and delusion. Then Jambu Kadaka put one more question, whether there is a method or way to attain it. The Buddha said that Eightfold Noble Path is the only way to reach to Nibbana. So if we really want to experience Nibbana, we must follow this way of a Noble Eightfold Path. There is a saying that there is a will, there is a way. What is important is to put into practice and to abide by the principle laid down by the Buddha. The Buddha in Nidana Weka Sayota Pali reminded us saying that Nibbana is a big, a big thing and also a splendid thing, which is free from all kinds of suffering. Since we say free from all kinds of suffering, it's a very, very big thing we will not be able to attain it with a small task and a small energy. For example, now people are giving small flower and incense and to the Buddha and pray for Nibbana, that's meaningless. Giving small thing, taking a big thing is not possible. It's not possible. We will not be able to attain it with a small, with, with a small task and a small energy. We have to strive with a strong force if we really want to attain Nibbana. The Buddha clearly said, Nayidan sitila maraba, Nayidan apena tamasa, Nibbana adikanda bansapadu kapa mochanan. To attain Nibbana is not as easy as eating, sleeping, and doing something. It's not easy. In the Mahaweka of Winia Pitakapali, the Buddha said that Nibbana is very difficult to see. Nibbana is actually very difficult to see. But the Buddha also said that Nibbana can be seen with, in, with insight knowledge. Mega plana maramana buddha nibbana. Nibbana can be seen only with insight wisdom. To realize Nibbana, what is the most important is mindfulness, sati, or apamata. The Buddha said in the Dhammapada that apamato amatampata. Mindfulness is the root cause of Nibbana. Two minutes more. Pamato mitju no And mindfulness is the root cause of death. Apamata na miyanti, those who are mindful will never die. Jepamata yatamata, those who are unmindful will die again and again. Here we have to carefully note that, uh, in, note uh, the intention of the Buddha. Why he boldly say that apamata namiyanti, apamata namiyanti, those who are mindful, they will never die. He said, actually, whether we are mindful or unmindful, since we are born, we are sure to die. Then why the Buddha said uh, the word apamadanami and because he, uh, because mindfulness is the cause of all kinds of merit, either mandate or supramandate. We can accumulate all kinds of merits if we are mindful enough. Because of uh, the existence of this mindfulness, 
uh, we are accumulating merits like Gibbon Charity, Dana, observing moral precepts, Sila, and then concentrating meditations, um, meditation, Bhavana, etc. Uh, Gibbon Charity is uh, nothing but killing greed, little by little, uh, which is uh, inside ourselves. Observing moral precepts is uh, nothing but killing hatred, Dosa, which is inside ourselves also. Concentrating meditation is also nothing but killing delusion, which is inside ourselves. Once we can kill all these three, Loba, Dosa, and Moha, we will get peace of mind entirely. There will be no more burning inside our mind. That's called Nibbana. By removing Loba, Dosa, and Moha, one can realize Nibbana. Uh, these are three root causes by which we are suffering in the birth and in death cycle of a sansara. Once we remove these three root causes, we will never be reborn. If there is a no uh, reborn, there will be no death also. That is uh, nothing but nibbana, total eradication of all kinds of sufferings and all kinds of defilements. May you be able to attain nirvana by eradicating all defilements. Thank you very much. Venerable Bheduria, uh, begin with the kind of uh, explaining with Nibbana. And then uh, Venerable uh, covered a lot of things like uh, uh, why the middle way is important, the uh, extreme of self-intelligence, and then extreme of self-modification, etc. And then um, he focused on um, different varieties of uh, Nibbanas and uh, how it can be attained. And what does it mean, the Nibbana? Uh, he also explained that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, misconceived notions in Buddhist uh, world that they, people think like um, Nibbana is a place. But it, in actually, it is not a place. It is a, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, mental state uh, that can be achieved through uh, hard work uh, and then he put forward very very interesting thing like uh, uh, people put uh, come with the uh, little offerings uh, in front of buddha and then ask for nibbana it appears like uh, you are cheating the buddha with us uh, offering a little uh, substance and then asking for a big uh, kind of uh, unvaluable uh, of, uh, kind of gift so then finally uh, he said that uh, finally the nibbana means uh, a, a kind of uh, uh, complete cessation of loba, dosha, and moha, and uh, uh, he wished good for all. So thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, my question is to the third speaker. Uh, you talked about uh, nirvana. Uh, in fact, uh, three types of nirvana. Nirvana with the cessation of uh, uh, affliction, nirvana cessation of skanda or aggregate, and another types of nirvana. Could you explain briefly about, say, the, when the historical Buddha, Gautama, uh, you know, experienced, when he experienced the cessation of, or the nirvana of uh, affliction, and when he, ex uh, when he experienced nirvana of uh, skanda, and when he passed away, paranirvana, what happens to his continuation? Actually, it's a very clear in my paper itself. Uh, there are not three kinds. There are only two kinds of pre-nirvana. Sa upadi se sa pre-nirvana, kanda pre no, kilesa pre-nirvana. Kilesa pre-nirvana, he experienced kilesa pre-nirvana when he... Uh, eradicate all the deep elements with the inside wisdom. Under the body three, yeah. Under the body three, yeah. The second one, he experienced uh, Kandapri Nidwana when he, uh, yeah, in, in Kushinagara, when he so passed what, away. What happened after he passed away? It's continuous. There is no result. Okay, that, that's enough. Um, Venerable, my question is also to you, and it's um, very similar to what um, Ken Roche uh, asked you already. But I would just like to um, add one more question to that, if possible. Because in the Sanskrit tradition, 
there is a clear explanation of when you talk about nirvana, of the Shravaka nirvana and Prateka Buddha nirvana and the Bodhisattva or the, uh, the Buddha nirvana. And I'm interested to know if in the Pali tradition, there is also an explanation if there is a difference between the nirvana that the Buddha experienced and a nirvana that the Shavaka experiences, if there is an explanation in the Pali tradition. Thank you. No, sir. There is no difference between, and as far as uh, this uh, eradication of uh, defilements is concerned, in Theravada literature, there is no difference between Arhanta or Bodhisattva or Buddha. There is no difference. All are the same. Okay, thank you. Now, Venerable, please ask your question. I would like to know, uh, like Abhidhamma Kosha, it says that there are two types of Arhata. Okay, those who possesses the qualities. Qualities here means uh, like a cleverance, power, and ten power, etc. And at the same time, there are some arhata who don't possess this kind of quality. Whether in Theravada tradition uh, you have this kind of division with arhata, arhata those possess uh, spiritual power like cleverance, and 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 is there any uh, arhatas those who don't possess, you know? Uh, this kind of quality? Is there any division? Yeah, the division is there. Oh. And, and division even in between the Arhanda, there is also division in between Buddha and Arhanda. There, are, there is a divisions. Okay. Okay. Division of qualities okay, is okay. there. My name is uh, Tenzin Lexo, and I'd like to ask a question for Venable Nyana. Um, I'm, I'm interested in the Pali tradition. How do you distinguish between minds that have the Which ability... Venerable? Which venerable? Which venerable? The third speaker. That one? The yes. Okay. Venerable Nyana, I think. Yeah. Okay. In the Pali tradition, Nyana. how do you distinguish between minds that have the ability to produce an effect, which is a continuation of their continuum, and minds that do not, right? Because at, at the time of nirvana, pari, pari nirvana, the mental, the, in, the, in an arhat, their mind does not produce an effect which is a continuation of their consciousness, right? But before Parinirvana, when the Arhat is alive, each, each moment of consciousness produces an effect which is its continuation, right? Mm. So in the, in, the, in the mind of the Arhat who's alive, in, how do you distinguish between the consciousness that produce an effect and those which don't? Mm. In their mind? You understand, the question is the that uh, uh, not when, the, when the Arhat enters the Anupadi Shesha, yeah? Uh, nirvana, uh, there will be no more uh, existence of his uh, continuity of his mind. But before that, when he uh, attains the with the sh of shesh nirvana, uh, that he has the continuity of the mind. So, uh, what what is the uh, kind of a difference between these two minds? That is his question. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I can explain in point of uh, abhidhamma. Before he attained Prinivarna, his whatever he does is just action. That action will not produce any result. Kinam Purana Nawana Ti Sambo, Virata Chita Yatiki Bosme, De Kina Pija Awiron Lichand, Chanda, Nipandi Dira Yatayam Tibo. Like a candle, it ceases when wax and thread finished. I'm Dr. Pemba Doji from, Sans, uh, from Sarnath. Uh, my question is to a Venerable Gyana, Veluri <laughs> Gyana. Yeah, I just want to, I have just a, uh, it's a, just a curiosity about the Buddha. Uh, as far as the conception of uh, Theravada and Abhidharma Kosha or whatever you say, that there are two Nirvanas, right? Sabadishesh Nirvana and Nirupadishesh Nirvana, according to Sanskrit tradition also. So my question is that, the, what do you consider Buddha is a little higher than these Arahats? If that is so, then what is the 
path to attain that Buddhahood. And the uh, second one is that, second one, I just heard, if I, if I heard right, if I'm not mistaken, that you, Venerable, has said that uh, after death, nothing can be done. So if that is so, then how the concept of Jata would, Jataka would be possible? That is my curiosity. Thank you so much. Is there any difference between the Arhat, other Arhats and the Buddha? Because you see, there are kind of, this is very clear. When Buddha was alive, there was the Shariputra, there was the Mogulyana, and a lot of other Arhat. But they, none of them are comparable to the Buddha. The way Buddha have affected, the, kind of influenced the community, the way he have uh, kind of uh, uh, benefited so many kind of innumerable beings, none of those Arhats have done this. So is there any difference between the Buddha and those Arhatas in terms of their attainment, in terms of their other qualities? That is the question, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, quality is a different. There, are, there is a different qualities between Arhanta and Buddhas. As far as uh, eradicating defilement is concerned, that is the same. But the quality is different. Why it's different? Because of uh, their work done previously. The Buddha devoted his life for the attainment of a Buddhahood. But Arahantas devoted their life for the attainment of Arahantahood. That's why it's different. In the case of uh, eradicating development also, the Buddha eradicated development together with habits, together with habits. But in case of Arhanda, Arhantas can eradicate, eradicate defilements, but there is a habit is still remaining for some time. 